We've talked about risk and what constitutes a risk-based approach to auditing. Let's now talk about controls. And when we think about controls, don't think that controls are simply antivirus and um, screen savers that lock and uh, eight character passwords. Controls really are all about having policies and procedures in place which we can then enforce in a number of ways. And when we talk about controls, there are two sort of general objectives categories. One is internal controls. The other is IS control objectives. Now with internal controls, these are not IT specific, but they're for the business in general. And they would be protecting the IT assets, but from a business perspective, they would be making sure people are in compliance with the company policy or the government regulations. Uh, they would be access controls and not so much like system computer access or network access, but just like access in general, like controlled uh, access into a building, people using badges or man traps or um, keyed access or something like that. Uh, and it would also include confidentiality, which largely falls in the realm of IT, but just in general, the confidentiality of our data and the accuracy or integrity of our data. Now, a lot of these, of course, are um, achieved through uh, IT-specific methods. If we look at the information systems control objectives, these are much more IT-specific. So like the security of the operating system, the security of developing an application, and an application that we use, or the security of our database and the data in that database, or whatever our data system is, or um, security in regards to user authentication. Also making sure that users are in compliance and using technical controls, like um, uh, maybe there are operating system policies that only allow people to log on at certain times or to certain workstations, or you have group policies in Windows, or you have um, uh, access control um, on files and folders or printers or the network. And also, um, in addition, uh, when we talk about the IS um, control objectives, we're also trying to make sure that whatever not only company policies we have are enforced, but also any uh, regulations or laws uh, that govern our industry are also enforced. When we talk about internal controls, the controls we have inside, different types of internal controls. So there are three basic types, and these types you'll need to just be aware of in general. We have accounting controls, which are, as the name implies, these are financial controls, controls over how the money is uh, handled, the transactions, how it's, the information is stored, how the, how the money is moved, and uh, how we keep our books and what we report and that sort of thing. We also have operational controls, which means just our day-to-day, -day, what do we do day-to-day -to, -day to run our business? And then we have administrative controls, which is how do we know from an administrative or management level that what people are supposed to do, they're actually complying with. And administrative controls requires that you um, actually kind of act like a police officer. Administrative controls are less technical in nature as opposed to let's make sure that people are following procedure and policy. Now, our internal controls have different classifications and you'll be expected to know the difference between these. We have preventive controls. Let's not allow this breach or whatever to happen in the first place. And how can we do that? Well, we can hire the right kind of people. We can train them properly. We can have physical access control, so you can only get in with a key card or knowing the, the particular um, sequence. Uh, we'll also have detailed security policies. When I talk with a client, my first question after I get familiar with how they operate is, may I see your security policy? And that will then tell me not only what it is they're trying to do, but whether or not their policy is adequate for what they are doing. A security policy can be as simple as just a little one-page thing with a couple of sentences, or it can be a hundred pages with different sections um, with a sub-policy for everything from wireless access control to, to locks on doors. And, and so preventive, what do we have in place to keep the problems from occurring in the first place? And so we'll need not only the policies, but also 
It can include things like, well, we're encrypting the software to protect it. We're using BitLocker on our laptops. Uh, we have NTFS permissions and print permissions and share permissions, and we have um, uh, rights management systems. And, and so we have preventive things to prevent people from getting into where they should, should not be in the first place. So that's preventive. The next one is detective, realizing we can't prevent all the time because you can't imagine all of the scenarios up front. So how can we detect, what controls do we have in place to detect in case we didn't catch it up front? How can we detect it as it's happening? Um, uh, so this would include, of course, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention. Um, it would uh, include, um, uh, as we're going through some production line, checkpoints to make sure at this point are we good, at this point are we good. Um, also, are there any statements? Like in this case, we have an example of an overdue statement report so that money that's owed to us doesn't slip past our, our um, awareness and that we, we can catch that pretty quickly. Or activity log reviews. I mean, there are, in larger organizations, you have security officers, all they do is review logs. And so we want to detect who's been accessing what. So these are detective. And if you're going to be detecting things, then of course you need to have corrective controls. Okay, we detected something. Now, now what are you going to do about it? Well, um, some of it can be automated, like our intrusion prevention, intrusion detection is detecting abnormal traffic on the network, so therefore it will automatically create some um, firewall rules. Of course, you have to be careful about automated sorts of correction. But also, the correction can be, hey, you know, the horses are gone, no point in shutting the barn door, what can we do now? So uh, we have a contingency plan, we have disaster recovery, we have good ba clean backups, um, or we have ways of preventing this from happening again. So these are the internal control classifications. And then when we implement our controls, what types of implementation? Now realize a control is not merely a technical thing like you have to have a password that's so long or there's a group policy on on Windows. A control is any policy, procedure, method, technical implementation, software product, physical something, anything to help minimize, mitigate risk and keep it at a manageable level. That's a control. And it really starts with a policy. And it, and it really, really starts with an attitude at the very top. It starts with corporate culture set by a tone by the people at the very, very top, and then it goes all the way down. So um, when we talk about control implementation types, there are general controls that we implement, and then there are IS or IT specific controls. And those general controls, well, they can include things like day-to-day um, uh, -day operations controls. Okay, you guys have to come in and clock in. You have to take a break at certain times. Um, you have to do certain things uh, when you start up a computer, you have to go through certain things. In order to install something, you have to go through a, an approval process. So we have controls in just operations. There can be financial controls, of course. So like you have to collect the invoice, you have to stamp it, you have to enter the transaction, you have to have names and signatures and dates and times. Um, you can also have administrative controls, like, okay, um, I'm going to review uh, as a, a boss regularly. I'm just going to kind of check and make sure everyone's um, doing what they should be doing, not, not only so they can be productive and help them in case they're, they're not quite doing as well as they should be, but also just to see if we've had a little bit of slippage. Maybe people aren't quite following every procedure that they should. And, of course, it depends on your industry. Like, if you're in the nuclear industry, there are going to be extremely rigid controls. If you're in health, like, like what I've worked in, there are some very clear controls um, to protect patient privacy and um, to protect uh, data. And so um, uh, there will be administrative controls that the manager then has to also follow. You can also have then just things like general access controls, like only people can, people can only come in the building by swiping your badge, don't tailgate or piggyback uh, behind other people, uh, that kind of thing. And there, of course, will be physical security. We'll have cameras, we'll have guards, we'll have um, locked doors. 
we'll have uh, lighting in the parking lot, we'll have um, certain uh, height of fences and, and shrubbery and things like that. So that is our general control type implementation. For the IS specific controls, these secure all the IT functions, of course. So these are the things we expect from an IT perspective, like um, what controls do we have in place to make sure that applications we develop uh, don't have too many vulnerabilities. And there are tools you can use to check your code. Um, wh what do we have in place to make sure that our network and our operating system and all our servers and workstations are as secure as possible? Well, there are best practices. There's the best practices analyzer by Microsoft. There are access controls we can put in place, authentication. We can lock things down, turn off unnecessary services. So these are our more IT type controls. Uh, also, as well as our operational procedures, how do we allow people to connect to the network? Um, so the wireless has to be WPA2 uh, enterprise. And um, we'll have network access protection when you come in from uh, the outside. And um, you'll have to use a smart card or an RSA token to create a VPN. And, and so we'll have these kinds of very IT-specific access controls. So realize, if you're a technologist like me, controls are not just about setting password policies and requiring smart cards. They're also about what do we do on a general level, non-IT based. And that could well fall within the scope of what the um, auditor has to be taking a look at. Now, we talked about risk-based auditing. Let's talk about uh, just in general different types of risk here. We have just the overall risk of the thing we're looking at and um, how can we reduce the overall risk. And also, the audit itself is going to have certain amounts of risk. Certain amounts of risk like there are things we won't catch. There are things that'll be pre-existing. There will be um, uh, the, the problem of maybe the client is not very cooperative. Um, so there are all sorts of risks inherent in the audit process itself. The audit process itself may not be 100% effective and you have to be very upfront about these are the risks and when you have your report, hey, these are the things we ran into. We couldn't get certain departments to cooperate. We couldn't get cooperation of this and that you have to realize that controls have risks um, and there are inherent risks, risks that you just come with, like um, management overriding policy. That's a huge inherent risk. Yeah, okay, two people are supposed to sign this check and you're supposed to go through a process, but if the company owner says, I gotta go take a check with me, who's gonna say no to the guy, right? So, um, or also our industry is changing so often that we can't help that, um, or people have bad judgments, or there's collusion between two employees working together to perpetrate some kind of fraud. So there's all kinds of inherent risks that uh, we, we, we have to document as best we can, but we accept that they're outside of our control. And then, of course, there's the risk for the controls, that the controls are inadequate or not doing what they're supposed to do. And there's the detection risk as well, that we're just simply not detecting what we're supposed to be detecting. So we now understand how to, the, the process of identifying risk. We understand that there are all kinds of tr controls that attempt to answer those identified risks, to mitigate or minimize those risks. And the controls can be uh, administrative or very technical. They can be um, general or they can be very IT specific. And they can be um, preventive, detective, or corrective, and that there are risks to the audit itself, risks that we may not find stuff, risks that we, we start with risks that we, we can't help, that are outside of our control, uh, inherent risks to this kind of business. So we have to just be clear about documenting all these things so that we know the limit and the scope. So the next thing, now that we know about the risks and the control objectives, let's talk about the planning.